Hi there, it's Jay Morell again. And this week we're gonna sit on my porch and talk about homeschooling with a newborn. I've heard from many moms who are adding a new baby at some point during this year. And of course, we are adding a new baby right around Christmas time. And it's a question that comes up a lot, especially when it's something that a family hasn't done before, or if it's been a few years since you've added a newborn during the homeschool year. Um, us moms, we just do so much. And then we wonder, well, how am I gonna add that new baby to? So we're just gonna talk about some tips and some helps that other moms have shared today and some things that I've learned along the way. Um, jumping right in, let's see. If you were sitting, there's another chair here, just pretend you're sitting right here beside me. And if you were concerned about homeschooling a newborn, the very first piece of advice I would give my good friend would be to make sure that you take care of yourself. And we know that as busy moms and then adding in that homeschooling, it can be hard to remember to also take care of ourselves. And the days go quick and life is short and it can be a big whirlwind. So especially when you're expecting a little one, that's a great opportunity to put your feet up on the couch. You, you are growing a big reason to rest. <laughs> um, I always spend it seems like my pregnancy with Amelia, which was in 2013, um, I just felt like I spent the last three months on the couch with my feet up. And we did a lot of couch schooling during that time. And we, in, we employed a lot of grace and flexibility because ultimately that's what homeschooling, a big benefit of homeschooling is the flexibility that you and your family have. So if you need to do school from the couch, you are more than able. If you need to take it slow and steady as the mom, you're able to do that. So getting back to taking care of yourself, if you are able to get, get the best sleep and the most amount of sleep that you're able to at night, it is so helpful, I know for me, when I am rested, our day goes so much better. When I am short on sleep, I am crabby, and I am just a big two-year-old, pretty much. Me and my little ones match up. So if I get my sleep at night, then the entire, that really sets us up well for the day before. Now, a lot of times I have to plan for that. Our youngest children go to bed right around seven o'clock. So if I know that I need a good amount of sleep, then I go to bed right after them. And some people may be like, how can you go to bed so early? And I just have to. It doesn't mean I, I go to sleep at that exact moment. I mean, I may read for a little bit because reading is always good for my soul. Um, you know, I may read for about 30 minutes or so. I try not to read for three hours because that can defeat the purpose. But I try to read for a little bit if I'm able. And I will sleep 7.30 at night to 7.30 in the morning during the last stages of my pregnancy easy. Um, another helpful thing for me to do is to try to get a nap in the afternoon. It is not uncommon for me to sleep 12 hours at night and then sleep two to three hours in the afternoon, again, if I'm able to. I know that sometimes we have um, children who aren't napping and we're not always able to take that nap in the afternoon, but even laying down on the couch and putting my feet up um, and even if I'm doing things with the children, my body is still in a resting position and that's majorly helpful to the whole spirit of our home. Um, and that can even apply to homeschooling while mom is sick. You know, you don't have to stand the whole time you're homeschooling. You don't have to take on the, um, the appearance of a formal teacher in a classroom. That's part of the beauty of homeschooling. You're at home. And I know that some people think homeschoolers live in pajamas. And whenever I'm at the end stages of my pregnancy, I'm comfortable. I'm in my pajamas or the yoga pants or a sweatshirt. <laughs> you know, we just, we relax. And that is totally allowed. That's a very wonderful gift that we have as homeschooling moms. We get to be comfortable. Not only are we with our children all day, but we can be comfortable, and especially while we're pregnant, that's the most important time to be comfortable. 
Um, another important thing to do to take care of yourself is to drink your water throughout the day. Now I know, and guys, you don't have to listen. That means more trips to the bathrooms, mom. But I can only speak from my own experience. I feel better when I'm rested and I feel better when I've had a bottle of water that I just constantly refill that I'm working on all day long. Um, my I am sharper, my mind is sharper, my tone of speech is calmer with my children. It's just very good for me to be rested and to drink my water. Um, another thing that I'm learning, especially with this pregnancy, is to really watch what I'm eating. I've had, this is my seventh pregnancy and many pregnancies I just took pregnancy as an excuse to, hey, I can eat what I want. I can have a choke, a Coke, a choke, yeah, I can choke on a Coke and a chocolate eclair if I want to. But now I, I realize, you know, if I'm going to continue to have babies and be a healthy mom and be um, in good physical and spiritual shape, I really need to watch what I'm putting into my body. So this pregnancy, I'm watching what I eat. I'm really watching my carb intake. Um, even before I got pregnant with baby Daniel, I was already thoroughly loving the Trim Healthy Mama plan. I It seemed easily lost 20 pounds and it was a very enjoyable way to do it. Um, just so many benefits to the plan. Again, I highly recommend that you get the book, but it's also an excellent plan to continue with during pregnancy because I'm, I'm totally off of sugars. I'm not using any enriched flour. Um, if I'm cooking something that needs flour, I use milled flax a lot, which they highly recommend in the plan. Um, and the overall idea of the plan is I'm not eating in a way that spikes my blood sugar. And of course, there's times when I sin, and I know it though, I really feel it in my body. About two weeks ago, we were all you know, starving after church. I didn't have anything prepped at home. My husband wanted to take us out for pizza, and I was not good, and I had pizza, but boy, I felt it. I felt horrible on the way home. It was a total, I just totally missed it. So eating well, I know, is so important for me and for my body during pregnancy and of course all the time, but especially during pregnancy because like you know, when you're growing a baby and yeah, growing a placenta, <laughs> odd things happen in women's bodies and we just really have to watch what we're putting into them. So that's rest, that's drinking our water, that's eating what's right for our body. And you know, there's probably certain things that you can eat and still feel great and I can't eat that I don't feel well when I eat them. And so you need to just listen to your body and how you feel. Um, so for the last 12 years, we have added a new baby to our homeschool family every other year. And we've had uh, the new baby and then we've had toddlers and new baby with toddlers and then older children. And, you know, our family has just continued to expand. And I know that Many of you moms are in the same situation. So last night on both of my Facebook pages, on the Free Homeschool Deals page and on the J. Morrell Stewart page, which used to be the Holy Spirit-led homeschooling Facebook page, I just asked moms to share their thoughts and their tips on how they incorporate childbirth and adding a newborn during the homeschool year with their family. Um, in there's a link to an article that I've written about homeschooling a new homeschooling with a newborn that's in the description of this video. If you click that link in the article, I also have links that take you to both of those Facebook discussions. And there are well over a hundred moms who have chimed in giving their thoughts and their, their advice and their tips, which I think that's part of the beauty of homeschooling is that we have so many moms that we can pick one another's brains and, and again, take what works, leave what doesn't work, but we're certainly not alone in this and there's a lot of great information and thoughts out there to give a try and make work for you. Um, the biggest thing, and I've, I've mentioned this before, but just God's grace and flexibility. We are able to make our own schedules as homeschoolers. 
we are able to decide when our holidays are, decide when our breaks are. Um, I talked to one mom who she had a scheduled cesarean. She has one coming up this fall. So they went ahead and started school a little earlier this summer. And so she's already planned in time to give her body time to heal and time to really just soak up and enjoy that baby and without it being as pressured of an experience um, because she she has a scheduled date so that's obviously very helpful when we can schedule our births um, I know that with my birth of baby Daniel that's right around the holidays and we'll be taking a few weeks off anyway for the holidays um, so that's really going to give us our baby buffer time um, for his birth. Um, the, the biggest thing that I don't want us as moms, you know, especially if you've had a couple children, you, you can probably look back and some moms can look back and see, you know, with that baby, I really feel like I rushed those newborn days or those weeks. And if I could do anything different, I would just slow down and enjoy that more because it goes so fast. And no matter how many babies you've had, you know it's just a blink of an eye and those those days are gone um, you know with my 14 year old we're already discussing college classes and military plans and and that's my baby but if you have a, a upcoming birth a new member of your family that is the time to really remind yourself now wait this goes fast and the newborn days really are days and before I know it, I'm going to have a mobile baby and a toddler, and then we're going to be picking out kindergarten books. <laughs> so it goes so quickly. I really like to um, remind myself that strong family time is one of the main reasons, um, definitely in our top five reasons, why we originally felt led to homeschool and chose homeschooling, because we wanted our family to be together. We wanted a strong family bond, and we wanted major life events to be savored and enjoyed as a whole by everyone. So when I know that it is a major medical event to have a baby, and again, you have to take care of yourself as a mom, but um, it also needs to, it doesn't have to be a trauma or a burden. You can move slow and steady, and you can really enjoy those days and incorporate all of your children in those days. And remember, you don't have to do school from 7.30 in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon. And that's where the flexibility comes in. I know that for various reasons during different seasons, our homeschool time has been all over the map. If I have a, a new baby, when we were just starting homeschooling, um, Jaden was, he was in his first grade year, Zion was a toddler, and then we added baby Naomi. Jaden, at six years old, he needed one-on-one -on -one time for the majority of his homeschool days. So, and of course Zion was busy, and then I had little Naomi. So Jaden and I did the work that he really had to focus on, we would do in the evenings. Um, once Zion was worn down for the day, and baby Naomi had had lots of milk and loving and baby wear in time, we would have the one-on-one -on -one time with him once daddy came home and I was able to take Jaden and we could focus on his math and his writing and those tasks. And it wasn't at nine o'clock in the morning. It could have been at 6.30 at night. We had already had our full family day, but then we were able to focus and tackle the task that he needed mommy right there with him on at an unconventional time of day, if you're looking at the traditional school calendar. Um, that worked well for us. He was able to absorb more, and also his energy level was worn down from the day. So he was able to focus better um, on, those, on those tasks that he needed to give attention to during that time. So in the nitty gritty of what our homeschool family looks like, those weeks before the baby and those weeks right after. Again, going on the grace and flexibility, uh, we do a lot of reading and we do a lot of documentaries. World War II has been a hot topic at our house for a couple years now. You, I'm sure you've heard me mention that before. And so during my pregnancy with Amelia, we watched a lot of World War II documentaries on Netflix during those weeks leading up to her birth. 
when I just felt like I could not move anymore and the feet had to stay up and I could not get off that couch for a little bit. Um, we watched a lot of great documentaries. Also, we would do a chapter book a day many times. When I had a day where um, we didn't do so many documentaries, I felt like, okay, this is a reading day then we would read an entire chapter book in one day. We would start about nine or 10 and we might read all the way until dinner time. And even the little children, they would end up getting sucked into the book, which is a wonderful thing. Um, even if they had times where they might go do Deplo blocks or they may go play, they would still end up back in the living room with the older kids and I. And they would soak up a lot of the book as well. Um, so reading on the couch, is a wonderful tactic during those last couple weeks of pregnancy. And I give myself at least two weeks after the baby's born where, you know, there is no for formal schooling at the kitchen table. We are just enjoying the baby. The children can help bathe the baby. Um, they can bring mommy things. They're just, they're big helpers. And those are excellent times to grow those independent life skills. Um, Older siblings can help make sandwiches for younger siblings. Younger siblings who maybe haven't done too many things independently before in those weeks following the baby, you can give them tasks to do that stretch those independent skills. Maybe they haven't put silverware away before. And you know what, while you're there with the new baby, it would be a great time for them to learn where the spoons go and learn where the forks go and start being a big helper. And so while I'm wearing the baby, we just slowly start getting back into our daily homeschool routine again, where the smaller children are at the table and I do activities and homeschooling with them while my two older children who are 11 and 14 complete their independent task. Normally by that point, and again, I say normally because can I get an amen? We all have days that don't go normal at all and we just scratch that off and start again tomorrow because his mercies are new each day. Um, so normally after the smaller children have had a good hour and a half of my focused time while I'm wearing the baby and the older children have done their independent work, then we switch. By this point, the younger children play um, or if the weather's nice, we have outside time. It really depends seasonally on what task they do next, but I have um, what I call one-on-one -on -one time, one-on-two -on -two time with my two older boys while our three younger children go do their, act, their additional activities. Um, by this point, Amelia, who is 18 months, is I put her down for her nap and then I will still be wearing the baby at this time. Um, from there, we transition into lunchtime and then we do group read aloud times. So with adding the new baby, we would just start with how we normally do our day and we would get as far as we can get. For um, a few weeks still after the baby, instead of read aloud time, that just may be quiet rest time and I continue to take a nap too. And we just add in a little bit more each week until we're back to our full routine again. But again, nothing is lost, nothing is missing because we know as homeschooling families, our children are learning all the time. They are learning in everyday task. They are learning an independent task and they learn multiplied volumes with the family time and the actual sitting at the kitchen table homeschool time um, than they would in different situations. So rest assured, you are doing an excellent job as a homeschool mom and adding another sweet baby will not traumatize or throw your family into peril. You just keep moving slow and steady, doing the best you can every day. I usually make a list on our whiteboard in the morning of what my goals are for our family for that day and kind of give some loose time blocks. I don't do well scheduling into 15 minute increments, but give some time goals on you know what I would like to accomplish by this time. And usually whenever we've added a new baby, I feel like if I'm getting half or three quarters of those things done, then we're doing excellent. And what we're missing, there will be plenty of time um, to slowly get our routine back in order. But the main goal is to just keep your family moving and let it be a calm and wonderful experience adding that new baby. Now, 
I had mentioned that I did ask on Facebook for other moms to give their opinions. So you see, I have my phone here. I'm going to, let's see, can Jay Morell get on Facebook on her phone? I'm going to read you some of those excellent thoughts from other moms. Um, the first lady, I'm going to read her comment. She's a friend of mine. Her name is Maureen Spell, and she has a wonderful site. Yay, yay, for Spell Out Loud. Um, she offers great printables and wonderful information that's over my head, but I'm trying to soak it in, no pun intended, on essential oils and and homeschooling a large and growing family. She also has some wonderful resources on doing science with preschoolers. Lots of fun and really doable things. But she um, gave her thoughts on homeschooling with a newborn, and I'm gonna read those for you. And then she also wrote an article about homeschooling with a newborn because you know, a lot of these topics, us moms, we just keep on going and adding our little spin to it. And so I will have a link to her article and her thoughts in my article that's linked below. But what Maureen shared, she says, don't stress out about homeschooling looking a certain way during this time. Yes, there can be some pressure to get it all done, but usually that pressure comes from ourselves, and that is so true. But don't give in to it. The newborn slash young baby stage is such a short stage in the long range scope of things. Use this time to allow other kids to learn new independent skills, such as getting their own breakfast, helping you bathe the baby, learning how to fold laundry, etc. When my kids know that I really need help, I have found that they step up to it, up to the occasion, and they feel good about contributing to the family in this way. When the baby starts to get a little older, then add back more formal learning times in your day. So those were Maureen's thoughts. And again, you can find her full article on that linked to in my article. And let's see, I know that there were some other moms. Um, a mom named Heather said, I'm expecting my fifth next month. This will be the second time adding a baby while we are actually homeschooling. Here are my tips. Relax. It's not going to kill your child's education if you don't get music and science and art in. Stick to the basics and add in the extras as you can. She says that her family is going to focus on their reading, their math, their handwriting, and their spelling because that's the core of their education. And then they're going to add in other subjects as time and especially as her energy allows. And let's see. So many good tips. Another mom named Natalie, she said the great part about homeschooling is it takes a fraction of the time as a full classroom does. And that's what I was hinting at earlier. You don't need seven and eight hours a day to educate your children and then send them home with a lot of homework. In a fraction of the time, you can instill the learning that your children need to know, um, and you don't have homework to go with it. She says, just make sure the work is geared towards your kids' learning styles, and they will practically do the teaching for you. And that's great to employ with a new baby. Oh, and then Jamie shares something cute. She says, for me, abandon that it must be done on a schedule. I've never had a predictable newborn so you get it done whenever and wherever you can and that's very true that goes back to when I was sharing about creatively homeschooling during off school times if you have to get a lot of schooling done in the evening times when the household is settled um, we've had times where we've traveled as a homeschooling family with my husband's job we spent a year road schooling and so um, there were so many excellent opportunities during the week that were educational that we would do our our table work school as I call it in, in the evenings and then we might school more on a Saturday you can really do whatever works for you and if you haven't learned that about homeschooling yet then having a new baby is an excellent way to learn that Shannon shares do as many read aloud read aloud books as possible for history and science and that is very true another mom and it, her Facebook page is called What Joy Is Mine, says don't be afraid to take off from schooling altogether. 
When a new baby entered our family, it was okay to just be a family and let older children learn about being a mommy's helper with the baby and siblings give mommy some downtime to adjust for the family. We call these days life skill days, yes. And another mom had a great point about making homemade baby food as part of homeschool. You can also make bibs and other projects for the baby. And I will read one more. Jennifer shares, grace, grace, and more grace. Give yourself time. Read aloud when you can't seem to get off the couch. And that's my secret weapon. We just read on that couch. And believe me, when my children are grown and gone, they will remember all the times that we have gotten lost in great books together. Those are going to be really important memories to them and really important memories to me when I'm old in my bed. So now I'm looking on the Free Homeschool Deals Facebook page and that's where I also asked this question last night. We had a lot of good comments there. Let's see. Okay, Melanie shared, I have four now, two years apart. I think the more structured you attempt to be, the more days you go to bed feeling like a failure. Embrace learning rather than schooling and be free to take advantage of small opportunities with each child. More is learned in five minutes of my child's eagerness and curiosity than a week of planned lessons. And th those are excellent thoughts too. Let's see here. Another mom said, I homeschooled with my baby in a wrap and carried him around close to me so I could carry on with everything else. I had three other children at this time. Baby is happy and everyone else is too. And we had a comment from a mom who has been homeschooling for quite a long time and I'm going to find it here. And again, you can go on the page and look for it also. Excuse me while I find it. Another mom says, the biggest thing is to be flexible. Don't try to be super mom. Utilize baby's nap time as much as possible. If you are nursing, bring the older children alongside to you for reading time. So I think it's easy to say that homeschool moms love to read. We love reading time. Jessica says, I have a five and a half year old and a three and a half year old. I am homeschooling along with a three and a half month old. I wear him in a wrap and nurse him while I teach the older two. If the baby requires more care, I simply take a break and let them play or color or do something that doesn't require too much direction for me at that time. Oh, and another mom has a great idea. I've learned to teach phonics while nursing. Explain a math problem while nursing. I love the book Time Management written by mothers with children. It also teaches how to set a schedule with a newborn and a handful of children. So we'll have to look up that book. Let's see here if we have any more. I will read one more and then you can go find the rest for yourself. But as I said, there's over a hundred comments from moms who have done this. So even if you're getting ready to have your ninth baby, it never hurts to be refreshed and encouraged by other moms. Julie Reese shares, get lots done during baby's naps. Read, read, read while nursing. Let children bring you a notebook to demonstrate a concept to you while you're feeding the baby. Be patient with yourself and just expect interruptions to happen. And that's right, we live this life together and life gets messy together and we just have to do the best we can as a family. And again, try to make it a wonderful, enjoyable experience. Um, so these are some of my thoughts on homeschooling with a newborn and you've heard from some other moms too. Please go ahead and share in the comments of this video what, you, what advice you would give to other moms. Share how it's worked for you. You can even share some things you tried that just didn't work. And <laughs> maybe that would save another mom some time. Um, another question that came up a lot in the comments on Facebook was about homeschooling with a newborn is easy. It's homeschooling with a toddler that's hard. And I know those toddlers can be challenging, but that's also a wonderful opportunity to get them in the flow and routine of things with your family and with homeschooling. So 
Um, coming up very soon, I'm going to have a video and more helps on homeschooling with toddlers. One toddler, many toddlers, toddlers and a newborn will we'll share and chat about it all. Um, but I also don't want to discredit the, the pressure and um, the emotions that moms who are adding in a newborn also go through because their bodies are going through so much and we know there's just a rush of hormones and emotions and and so much and I'm homeschooling so slow and steady wins the race um, enjoy that flexible schedule take care of yourself let the children fill the couch with books for you um, if we do if if I feel like we have to get out of the house because my last two babies have been a winter baby and now baby Daniel will be a winter baby. Our get out of the house activity may be to make it to the library in town, to let the children pick out wonderful books and to get back home. And that is a wonderful activity for one day when you are getting towards the end of pregnancy. If you can accomplish that, you're a winner. And then they've had an outing and they have fresh books. So possibly you can sneak some resting time with some of your books and they can learn and enjoy some time with their new stack of books. Um, so I had to throw that last one in there. So again, leave your thoughts in the comments. Be looking for the homeschooling with a toddler video coming out soon. Be sure to subscribe to my channel because it tells YouTube that you want to see more of my videos and that you're enjoying them. And it also helps you not miss a video because my goal is to get one to two videos out a week. And of course, I, I miss that terribly sometimes. So that way you won't miss it when I get something up. And besides that, I hope that you are having a wonderful start to your new homeschool year. Um, it is the weather's beautiful here today, but I know I can feel fall is coming. So I'm trying to get let the kids get another week or so in before we get back to our new homeschool routine for this year and um, from moms who I've heard who'd like to know about our daily homeschool routine as soon as we have worked out our new year and are back to that I plan to do some videos of that for you also so have a great day and I will be chatting with you very soon bye bye